And then they cast him out, cast them out. And he bore witness to them, saying, I know not whether Jesus be a sinner or not. One thing I know, I was blind, and now I see. Moreover, he, had, he added, if he were not of God, he could do nothing. That's probably the cardinal truth of this whole entire pericope. If he was not of God, he could do nothing. And how many of us try to do things for ourselves, by ourselves, and don't see a result of positive attitude at all? We just continue the same sinful way, the same disadvantaged way that we were before. Finally, he confessed that he believed in that Christ is the Son of God, one of the first in the Gospels to do so, by the way. The judgment of the man born blind was indeed sound. This pericope certainly teaches us how to discern others by their fruits. They will be known. If we or others are of God, then we shall bloom and bear good fruit. If any of us is not of God, they, he can do nothing. Secondly, and much moreover, we truly should notice in today's gospel the way in which Christ healed the blind man. He spat on the earth and made clay of the spittle. Note that in every mystery of the church, healing occurs in a rather similar manner. Clay cannot heal the blind, and furthermore, with the breath of God, the clay becomes the vehicle for the healing. Water cannot heal, and yet the water of baptism heals because the blessed water bears the Holy Spirit. Oil cannot heal by itself, and yet the oil of chrismation and unction heal because they are filled with the grace of God. A piece of cloth cannot heal, and yet a priest's soul can heal through the grace of Christ at the sincere confession of sins and the repentant intention of the sinner. Bread and wine cannot heal by themselves. And yet, the bread and wine transformed into the body and blood of Christ heal through the Holy Spirit. Wood and paint cannot heal. And yet, icons can heal by the Holy Spirit who penetrates into their material and essence and radiates grace from them. Smoke cannot heal. And yet, burning incense brings healing through the blessing of Christ. How many times I've visited people in the hospital, and because the hospital was just really, don't burn too many things in here, mother. When I was there, I brought a very, very small sensor and put a small piece of incense in it and lit it. And the person just immediately ah, felt much better. Now, is that because I had funny things in the incense? No, I promise you I didn't. It's because the incense reminds them of God. In this way, our bodies, mere flesh and bone and blood, can become containers of Christ. With our souls animated and enlivened, we can become lamps of the Holy Spirit. The eyes of our souls, the doors of perception, come awake and sensible, and we see the whole world of God's creation as it really is. We see that every blade of grass, every hill, every tree, every cloud, every drop of rain, and every ocean, all creatures and all people are miracles of God's handiwork, signs of his sacramental, mystical presence among us. Excuse me. I think that's a call from God, but I'll answer it later. And we see that we live not in the banal, mundane, everyday world, but in potentially paradise. The world as it really is, as God made it first. For we see God, the Creator, be he behind all things and all people. One of the most basic things that I've tried desperately to teach in my entire ministry along with Mother Terry was the fact that we need to not necessarily see just what superficial thing is in front of us. We need to go through that and see behind it to see what actually is real behind what we see. Because most of the time, it's Jesus Christ himself. And then we too can say, together with the blind man, 
I was blind, and now I see. God bless you all very much. You take care and have a wonderful day. See you all when I'm older. God bless you.